Well, I just accidentally deleted the entirety of the recording that I just did. So, I have to revoice over this 30 minutes again. Unfortunately. Um, unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to take Hexarum, which just makes gens go regress backwards when survivors aren't touching them. Um, and then we're going to have one one blood point offering for brutality. So when we hit people, when we hook, or not hook, when we hit people, when we grab people, uh, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, Hexarum is really all you need on Hag because you're going to hold one area down. Um, and you'll see here we're going to have a perfect 3 gen, which is perfect for a hag to hold down. That's what we want to go for. We're going to load into this lobby. Alright, we're going to see that there is a, a Nia Carlson, two Dwights, and a Steve. So we know that the two Dwights might be running Prove Thyself, which means they're going to stay next to their teammates to try and gen rush one of the Dwights. Uh, has, a, has a med kit, but one Steve has a toolbox, so he's going to try and slam a gen right away at the beginning of the game, and I'm aware of that. And he's going to have one of these two Dwights with him for sure, because they want to give this Steve and his toolbox a boost to its repair. Um, but this Nia has a med kit, the other Dwight has a med kit, so I'm thinking about what perks are good on med kits, you know? Do they have, like, empathy? Do they have so on and so forth? And empathy is a perk where um, she does have it, by the way, where she's she can see anyone who's injured. So when someone's injured, you can see them across basically the whole map. Um, and, like, you can see them moving and everything, like permavision on injured teammates. Um, so we're kind of, like, at a position where... Um, I'm assuming that she's going to potentially group up on people, the other droid might group up on people, um, and they're going to gen rush. So what I'm hoping is that I can get them stuck into one area where I force them into a 3 gen. And luckily when we spawn in we're right next to the house, and the house on this spawn, the generators did spawn three at the house side, one on either side of the house and one inside the house. And what's great about that is they're all very close within walking distance and the one inside the house is a dangerous gen that people don't like to touch so I know they're going to be on the two outside gens um, so I'm going to do everything in my power to hold them at that house I want them to stay at this house um, and they're very altruistic and most survivors are, so they're going to try and help each other, they're going to try and pull each other off of hooks, so on and so forth, when sometimes it's not always the best idea to pull each other off of hooks, because sometimes if you pull somebody off a hook, you put yourself in danger, and it's just not worth it to put yourself in that position. Because you can run to the other side of the map and get a gen done, or you could help somebody. Like, gens are more important than someone's life. Um, except for early like if you can knock out two gens early or three gens early and then someone's going to be hooked and they're going to die let them die I mean or wait until the last possible second to get them because um, you can get so much pressure on the killer by just not getting that person because they're like why are they not getting this person um, and then a gen goes off and they're like oh no and then another gen goes off and splitting up is a really big thing. A group that splits up is terrifying. Now, we're going to go ahead and trap up this whole house. Um, and there's two breakable pallet doors right here, and we're not going to break them. Because people are going to run down that hallway and hope that I've broken one already since I've made this area my home. When they get here. And boom. The Steve used his whole toolbox up, and he popped the gen with a Dwight. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, you just have to assume things. <clears throat> they're working on another gen over there I don't care, I'm still setting up my base right here, one of my traps just went off and then another trap goes off 
I don't care. I'm still trapping up important spots, like jump spots and everything. There's another pallet wall there. I'm not going to break it. We're going to come over here. See if we can figure out who came over here. We see a Steve. So we're going to follow this Steve. And now, this is where this comes in handy. Boom. He gets slowed for a split second looking at that. He looks for these pallet doors to be open, but these pallets aren't open. Because I, I wanted him to run at that dead end. It got me a free hit. So he runs through the house. We're going to follow him around. He's not popping all of our traps. We still have three traps open. So I'm going to run over here. Swing. So he heard me swing. He see me run over there. He jumps through the window. Then I get him to come over here where I have more traps. He makes a mistake. He hides in the grass. He thought I was a, a dumb killer because I tried to run around and get him. Um, and that burned him a little bit. Now I see that they're going for my gen over there on that side. They have two gens done now. So when I hook this Steve, they should just go back to the other side of the map and get away from me and do stuff because I'm a hack and the best thing to do as a hack is to keep one spot pressured if they walked back to the other side of the map I wouldn't have known exactly what to do I would have been super pressured off on everything I have a Gatorade and it's delicious alright now I see that they're working on this gen for sure even though I know they have had some progress on it so I'm gonna come around the side because people try to hide next to the gen, so if you run straight to the gen, you might miss somebody. If you run across it, you have a better chance of finding somebody. So I got the hit on uh, a different guy, and then this dude's a sprinting away. So I'm going to try and get a hook on him, because I've got one hook on the Steve, but I want to make sure I can lock down a second hook on this guy. Now we have two people on the surviving team that have been hooked one time. Steve is only on his first hook, and that guy is only on his first hook. They go pull the Dwight off, I don't care. They're healing the Steve, so I know that um, he either has a Dwight or the Neo with him. So I know they're still here. They're still on this, this side of the map. So I'll just go ahead and take my time, replace my traps, because I know they're here. I'm not worried about them. They're out there and they're healing, which gives me time to reset my traps, which is <clears throat> bad for them. So what are they doing? They're on a gen. Oop pop a pallet. I'm going to get rid of this pallet because it's in my area and I don't want it there. Now, I get really confused here for a second and then I'm like, oh, wait, her tracks run backwards. I turn around, and there's a Nia there. Now, I'm going to lose a lot of time here and in fact, we're going to run back through by this gen and you're going to see that the Steve continued to work on the gen. He ran back to the gen. There's run marks inside of there already that you can see where he ran in and started working on the gen while I was chasing. I'm going to get very hard punished for this. Um, and I chase her for far too long. I decide I'll just take this pallet since it's in my area and then I'm going to let her go. I should have let her go a while ago when I kept missing. And they're going to get that gen on the other side of the house and that ruins my three gen. And I'll instead go for the Steve, and I do a big miss there. I mistimed. I get a good trap to catch me back up. I miss again. Unfortunate. Alright. That that trap right there gave me just enough time. I know he's going to jump on that trap. I look at that trap. TP to it. Pop him. He's going. He's hoping that I've broken these pallet doors to make it easier for, to get them but it's really easier to get them if I don't break them. Now, I come over here and assess the fact that I've made a mistake, and they busted my 3 gen. At that point, they should go to the other side of the map, and they don't. They stay in my area, 
And I'm going to go for this Dwight. I'm not going to worry about her because I know that she's she's got little jukies going on. So we're going to go on this Dwight really hard here. I'm going to cut through the pallet to make sure he can't use the pallet to get away from me. I fail. But I still get a pallet out of my area next to one of my gens. And I've noticed at this point that the Nia has always helped everybody. Um, I pretend to not see her going around that corner. That's another big thing that you can do is pretend that you don't see somebody so they stay where they're at so they think that you're just passing them and you didn't see them. Then turn around and get them real quick. She's going to do a little bit of a run on me here. We are going to get a hit on her. We're going to hook her. Now, where are these other people at? We're going to go check this gen again. Lo and behold, they pulled the knee off. That gen was touched, even though it's still regressing. And it's going to constantly regress because <clears throat> my... Um, my ruined totem is on the other side of the map so when they put themselves over here they made a big mistake because now they're never going to be able to get rid of my ruin now at this point in the game i'm not worried about traps i and it it's all depends on the survivors um i'm not going to pick him up because i know that nia's probably has empathy so i'm going to let let her go try to pick him up see they're going to split up and that Nia and that Dwight, they're running around in a circle right now. And they're going to that guy that I have down to pick him up. He's up. I find him again. I'm going to take the hit now. And this will put him on his second hook. I make a big old mistake there. Now here's something intriguing. I hear they're working on that gen right there, and then they let go of it. And then I down him. They think I'm going to work on it. So he goes back onto the gen. I get a hit on him. Now I come out here, and Nia is trying to heal him. Because she has empathy. She knows where he is. She's trying to help him. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to go try and get a hook on him over here. She thinks that it's too far away where if I take the time to swing at her twice... Um, if I take the time to swing at her twice... I'm not going to be able to hook him. Unfortunately for her, it was close enough. I get the hook off anyways. It was very close. If I had missed one more second, I would have missed it. Uh, that Dwight, I seen him walk up to that corner quietly. There were no scratch marks because he didn't run. He tried to be sneaky. But I seen him, pretended like I was going to pick the Nia up. I didn't pick up the Nia. I went around the corner real quick and popped him. Now I have one person hooked, two people down, on, one on my shoulder. I get another hook. Someone's always hooked now. I'm going to run back and I'm going to go to the person I dropped because they're going to be picking him up. They pick him up right now. I'm going to go for him because I need to get him hooked because he hasn't been hooked. I've downed him, but I haven't yet hooked him. So I don't want to use that. I want to use some of the some of these hooks that are farther away from my area. And the reason we want to use hooks farther away from our area is because um, if I keep the hooks in my area, I can lock down the last two close to where I am and force them to stay in this area. If they want to go save each other, they have to stay here. And that's going to hurt them. Now, this Dwight, he's on the run. He goes down again. He has been pulled off the hook, and that's okay. Now here, we're going to take this one, which is in my area. The reason I'm going to put one in my area is because at this point in the game, I know that they're going to go get him, or they were going to go try to get him, and he was already done. Um, so I know that they stayed, and I just had to find them. Uh, and I know that there's two gens, but they've gotten smart, and they ended up leaving, and I, I assessed that. So I run and I listen for healing. I heard healing. I'm going to go for this thief. 
Now, here's the key thing. I back up and let him do what he wants. I want to assess if he's going to drop all the way off the mountain or off the hill or if he's going to stay on the hill. There was a hook on that hill, but I wanted to save it. We're going to come over here to this hook and just put him on this one. We're going to save that hill hook. Because that's a very good hook with a lot of vision. Um, we get Steve as well. Now we are we only have two survivors left to deal with. Um, so we follow these scratch marks. Did they go back to my area? No, they didn't. So now we're on the lookout for Dwight. Because Dwight's on his last hook as well. Both him and the Nia. But we want to find this Dwight because he's one hit. And the Nia's played well all game. She's been doing a good job. I want to give her hatch. So we see the Dwight running. We're going to full commit to this. You can see that's where my totem is right there in that corner. That's why I moved towards the wall a little bit. Um, so that's my totem. Uh, and it's on this side of the map. So they never seen it. They never got to see my totem. So they never got to get rid of Ruin. If they got rid of Ruin, they probably would have beat me. Um, but that's why Ruin's one of the best perks in the games. So now we're going to take this hill hook. The reason we take this hill hook is because even though he's going to go insta, boink, we can check the area here. Do I see her here? I do not. She is over there. We'll check this set over here. I wait for this to pop, boom. I go check for hatch, because the hatch has spawned. So we're gonna, the first place we're gonna check is the nearest building, because um, there's a higher chance for the hatch to spawn in a building, or the basement. So we check the building, there's no hatch here, we run down to the basement, look at the basement real quick. Oops, skidoodly doot 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 doot. No hatch. I bump into a wall because I'm bad. Now we'll run back up. And again, remember, we're not going to kill her either way. We're going to give her the hatch because she's been a good player and she hasn't been toxic either. Okay, we hear the hatch. We get lucky here. I should have walked around that way. It doesn't matter. I wanted to close it. I didn't because I wanted to see if I could get the pull. And that's why I swung late because um, if they're in the process of jumping in and you swing, you'll grab them and pull them up. Um, I just wanted to see if I could pull her out and then let her wiggle free and then maybe hit her again to get some more brutality points. Um, I, unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, but I was going to give her the hatch anyway. She got it. But if I did get those few points, I would have gotten two pips. Um, but that's just kind of how it works. Now we'll go into these... Um, we'll go into these perks and explain these perks. So, the Nia. She had self-care. We'll start at Nia. So she was healing herself. I seen her do this a couple times without her med kit, because you can heal yourself without a med kit as a character if you have self heal. She tried to use it. Um, it only ended up hurting her, for the most part, unfortunately. And then here's empathy. Now this is what I assumed that she had because every time I got someone down or I injured somebody, she was there healing them. <coughs> So I knew that somehow she knew where people were. And empathy gives you 128 meters of vision on people who are injured. So basically the whole map. She had boil over. All boil over does is when, if I pick her up, uh, within 12 meters I can't see hooks uh, glow. They won't glow to me, but I can still see them. They just, I can't see the glow. And then it gives her a better wiggle by 75%. Um, just kind of like a, like a, a fun, like, maybe you won't hook me perk. And then she had deja vu. Now they started on the other side of the map for me. Um, so she knew where three gens that were the closest to her. Um, um, that were really close to each other next to her. Uh, so she knew where they were and it was on the other side of the map. So she was like, okay, well, let's go to the other side of the map that's not here which was at the house because she always knew where the gens away from the house were the three away from the house uh, and this is one of the things that brought them to me which hurt them a lot 
especially since they wanted to make sure that we they got all three of them for some reason which is kind of silly now this Dwight here had technician which just is really good for um, <clears throat> being sneaky with gens and so on and so forth um, he had second win which is a Steve Harrington perk and he had prove thyself both Dwight's had prove thyself when you're near somebody you get 15% faster uh, repair bonus so um, if you stand next to them while they're working on a gen or if you're working on a gen with them it boosts it um, the second Dwight also had um, uh, uh, prove thyself he had kindred so he could <clears throat> see people see his teammates so they almost always knew where each other were uh, and the reason that I think that they were in a party is because um, they seem to have been working together the entire game. They were always on top of everything, always helping each other right when something happened, and it was just too convenient for them to have seen each other. So, uh, and again, all I used was Ruin, and we got a 12, a 17, a 15, a 20, and I've played against red players with just Ruin. Um, if you play well, practicing with the hag, locking down your area, you can play against people of any, like, skill level. As long as you make sure you're locking down your area, getting your traps set up and everything. And closer to the end of that game, I didn't need traps anymore, because I had already decided that I was going to let her go, and then I just needed to find one Dwight, and they ended up leaving my area, so it was kind of whatever. We'll go in and explain some perks and stuff and whatnot here in a second. And then after I get done explaining these perks, I'm not going to delete the entire audio that I made. <laughs> so I have to do it a third time. Alright, so, um, again, Hack is just really good at farming blood points. We had 32, 080 or something like that. Um, 32,000 blood points is the normal amount that you can get, um, without, like, boosted stuff like these, uh, tags and stuff that they're putting in the game for the Chinese New Year and whatnot. Um, I've played a little bit of Doctor, played the Wraith, played the Trapper. I don't put points into killers that I don't... <coughs> that I don't normally play. So, eh. Um. Okay, so this um, third seal is like, basically you hit people as long as your your totem's up. Um, it like gives you vision, or it makes them blind, so they can't see you, they can't see so on and so forth, crows and whatnot. Um, ruin, again, the best perk in the game, or at least one of the top perks, but it should be the best, it's basically the best perk in the game uh, for killers. Uh, just the gen regression is insane. And the max level of it is just also crazy. The speed that it'll go backwards. Uh, and then we'll look at this um, uh, Devour Hope, which is pretty cool. So as long as the people are inside your terror radius, well, some killers have different terror radiuses, but the Hags is 24. So if they can hear your heartbeat, 
um, and they take someone off a hook in your heartbeat area, um, you get a token. If you get two, you get haste uh, after hooking somebody, which can be good for like um, if you know that people are being like really toxic and they're following you around, or if they're sneaking behind you maybe to try and get the pull off the hook right away, uh, and you turn around right on them, um, you have like much more speed to go ahead and, and grab people. <clears throat> Uh, the third token, and this is what you want with it, is to get the exposed effect on all survivors. And if they break your totem, however many tokens you have is locked in. It doesn't go away. Um, so they'll always end up being exposed. Um, so you want to get at least three tokens. If you're lucky, you get five. And then when you down them, you can just end them uh, on the ground without having to hook them at all. Um, but you're looking for the three token this is if you want to get to level 5 to get an extra perk take Devourer Hope um, just the exposed effect on survivors is absolutely insane uh, to just get insta downs especially when if you get some good traps off uh, you can just TP to a trap and then smack they're down it's just so simple so easy um, yeah, we'll go look at some perks here as well. So when we're buying perks in the blood web, we want to buy the cheapest perks, by the way. Um, so yeah, usually on Hobilly I'll run like barbecue chili, infectious fright, and corrupt intervention, and then I'll swap in either tinkerers. Enduring or um, Lightborn, depending on you know if they have flashlights or not. Or and then I just decide Tinkerers or Enduring whether I'd rather be able to see them more with Tinkerers, know where they're at, and get the uh, undetectable so they can't hear me coming. Or if I'd like to not be worried about pallet stuns. You never really know. It's just fun to mix the two up a little every now and again, and then. Throw in some random perks too. Um, as far as it goes with the Hag, no, it's still good. Uh, Spies from the Shadows is still good. Um, if you can get the Hillbilly up to unlock his perks, um, Enduring is good for obviously pallet stuns. It cuts the time almost in half. Uh, Tinker is good because you get undetectable. You can sneak up on people and know what gen they're working on. Um, Lightborn's always good for flashlights. But, um, you know, you can mix it up with some different things. Like, you can use, like, Monster Shrine to get more blood points if you can hope that you're next to the basement. You can get a bunch of blood points that way. Um, all kinds of things that you can do. But, you know, I usually like to keep it with simple vision perks because vision is the most important thing in the game, I think. Because if you know where they are, you can pressure them, keep them off of gens, and that's the most important thing. And you got perks like Insidious, where if you stand still for a little bit, you, um, you get undetectable. Which is good for, like, stalking characters and so on and so forth. Um, but here we're just going to put some points in. You always want to get the lowest costing stuff that you can. And now, at a certain level, when you get higher up, there's always going to be two perks in the tree. And you will never be able to get both. You will only ever be able to get one. So you have to take the time to pick which one you think you want. Thrilling Tremors is good. It's another vision perk where if you pick someone up, it'll lock all the gens that people aren't working on and make them glow white. So if a gen still glows red on the entire map, that's where they are. So you can know that they're working on that gen. <clears throat> but we see this Noet over here, level 3. We want to get it because I like that perk more. So... I'm going to grab it, and then I'll go for these low tier 3000s, then I'll go for this 4k, and then the next cheapest is 6. Um, so we would go for that, but I was out of a lot of points, as you can see. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. Try and get the cheapest stuff that you can. Um, play smart. Learn how to mind game. And yeah, thanks for watching.